hey, go away. I don't have time for this right now. Welcome back, Dax. I'm Annika Vasquez. On today's episode, we get an update on Dax Sports, we have highlights from events in August, we meet some new faculty members, and find the answers to some common freshman questions. This is Jack TV. The campus has updated the student's cell phone policy this year. Elijah has more for us. While schools around the country are outright banning the use of cell phones, this year the campus has introduced only a slight adjustment to the cell phone use policy. As far as the new policies, well, we wanted to make sure the kids are understanding kind of the so teachers have the ultimate choice on um, when to use phones, when not to use phones. What's changed this year is what happens when the teacher collects your phone and turns it into the office. Uh, if you decided that you you know, want to disobey that policy for that teacher. We're not trying to over punish anything uh, or under punish anything. So that, that new policy is just simply, yeah, hey, just if it's your first this offense, we're going to give you your phone back at the end of the day, assuming that you're pretty compliant at the end of it. Of course, this makes it easier on students who won't have to get their parents involved. Yeah, I think uh, being able to do it like, you know, pick it up yourself the first time and uh, not have your parents have to be there is a little more, you know, forgiving um, because like, you know, the first time it could be just a mistake or a misunderstanding and that's really easy to clear up. And of course, if your phone gets collected again, your parent will need to come to campus to get it for you. For JAG TV, this is Elijah Cruz. And if you have any questions, just ask NAP for help. If you've noticed certain classes are small while others are packed, the counselors are working on it. Naima tells us more. Every year when classes start again, you may notice that some classes are full while others have just enough students to fill up half of the room. That's where the counseling staff comes in. Um, we always try to make classes as balanced as possible. Um, there are a lot of moving parts to a master schedule for over 3,000 students. Balancing classes on their own is already an uneasy feat, but when you're adding classes with certain numbers of periods available and set numbers of students, it makes things a lot harder than it sounds. So there are some classes, um, when we have higher level AP courses, those automatically are set at 33 students, and that's a new district requirement. Um, usually we try to keep classes in those upper levels around 32, 33, but we had a lot of extra students enroll right here at the end that makes some of those a little bit larger than they should be. After balancing classes at the start of every year, there's bound to be patterns that start to appear, or new classes that more students have signed up to take that are likely to fill up quicker. Um, it's not necessarily that they're unbalanced, that they're over full. And so um, one of those is AP language. Um, another one is AP environmental systems. So it's a lot of those advanced placement courses. The other classes are pretty level. Um, I think there's one or two, maybe an English two, that has smaller classes in the afternoon. But the larger classes are still at 26 seats. Although the counselors do what they can, overpacked classes are still not uncommon, but this can be attributed to schedule changes and the nature of student population shifts. Yeah, so there is a process uh, before school starts. Your counselors are here like three weeks before school starts and we are working on uh, schedule conflicts and balancing those classes out as best as possible. So there is a, a process for that. And again, once school starts and more students move in and that's why we really limit the types of schedule changes we can make once school starts because that's those are the types of things that throw those classes out of balance. For JAG TV in the counseling office, this is Riley Shosh. With the start of a new year, there's always a lot going on. Here's Rebecca with what you might have missed. Last week, the campus once again got the year kicked off with the Meet the Jags pep rally. Despite the record heat, athletes, family, and fans all showed up for the annual event. Band, dance, and cheer performed, and student council announced that this year's theme for homecoming is Johnson City Limits. And the week before, seniors got their final year at Johnson started with the classic tradition of senior sunrise. Seniors showed up before 7 a.m. to enjoy tacos and make some memories to kick off their final year. And speaking of seniors, some seniors showed up on the weekend to continue the tradition of painting their parking spots in the student parking lot. Seniors who wanted to paint their spots had to pay $50. That's on top of the already $30 parking pass required to park in the student lot. And this is a fundraiser for student council. That's all you might have missed so far. 
For JAG TV, this has been Rebecca Sable. And when Meet the Jags kicked off the season, both spirit groups were under new directors. Laura introduces us to the new faculty. This year, the campus welcomes two new directors who will lead the cheer squads and dance teams. Recent Texas State graduate Ashley Reyes will be leading the campus dance and drill teams. So it's definitely been a little crazy transitioning from student teaching and being on a drill team to now being a first year dance team director. Johnson has a very talented program and I knew what I was walking into, but with the support I've had from the girls on the team and Miss Ashford, it's been really easy and I've been having so much fun already and I can't wait for this season to start. Coach Gayla Gonzalez has stepped into the role of cheer coach on campus and brings years of experience with her. Really easy transition and fun. The girls are incredibly nice and respectful. They're talented. Um, I've enjoyed being on this campus. The first week of school has been fantastic, actually. So it's been good. And of course, the season starts with packed football games and spirit heavy events. I feel like there isn't just one thing that I'm excited for this year. Um, now we're transitioning into football season and then from their comp season. So I'm kind of just excited to learn how the things work at Johnson, all the traditions, all the dances that we do. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited to make memories and dance this year. I am most excited to just see how far I can go with them. Like, they had a lot of success last year, and so I really feel like my whole role is to get them better than they were last year. So I just wanna see how far we get. Both directors have strategies to help their students reach their goals and meet their standards. So when it comes to my students improving their dance goals and reaching their own success, I one thing I like to create in my classroom environment is just a space where all my dancers can feel comfortable. Dance, I think, is a very vulnerable thing to do. And a lot of people are embarrassed or they're scared to even try. But in my dance room and my dance class, I like to create a space where everyone feels welcomed and comfortable to try new things and to maybe fail, but always learning how to get back up and making, helping those setbacks make you better. As far as their skills and their goals, um, I am pushing them. A lot of kids said to me, you know, we never really worked out last year and they were really surprised when they came in on Wednesday and I had a whole workout planned. And you know, you don't get better unless you work at things. And so you have to, you have to hone in on the details and then work the details to improve the skills. Both directors know that ultimately one goal is the most important and that's making good spirit memory. To my dancers and students, I'm so excited to start the year off with you all. I've had so much fun already, so many laughs, so many memories have already been made and I can't wait to make more throughout the season. Just, I'm really excited to be here. I hope that um, I'm meeting your expectations and that I continue to help you guys do the things that you want to accomplish. For Jack TV, this is Laura Andrade. It may be a new year, but some things don't change. Here's Ethan with Jack Sports. What's up Jags? Welcome back to another year of Jag Sports. This week we have action from volleyball to the field. We also meet a new member of the Jag family. This is Jag Sports. First up, tennis took on Roosevelt last Thursday at Blossom. The Jags went 2-0 with an 11-0 win over the Rough Riders. They face off against Reagan today at Blossom at 4.30. Up next is cross country. They competed at the Unicorn Invitational in New Braunfels last Saturday with our boys placing first and our girls placing first as well. Our volleyball team faced off against Lake Travis on Tuesday in Austin. With the start of the school year comes football season. The Jags face off with the Rockets tomorrow night at Hero Stadium at 7.30 p.m. They play Piper next on September 6th at Piper High School. And at the start of every season, you probably notice some new coaches on the sidelines. This year, that includes Coach Goodlow, who is also keeping the score in the classroom. This offseason, a few new coaches joined the athletics faculty, including football coach William Goodlow. Let's see, I've been coaching football now. I think I'm entering coaching period for this is my second decade. I've been coaching football for a long time throughout California and Texas. Uh, so I think, I don't know, probably a year. This is my second decade. That's all I know. <laughs> coach Goodlow brings a lot of experience to this year's staff. And to the see, I've coached in the Rio Grande Valley. I was down at Sherry Lane High School. I was in uh, the DFW 
at Irvin MacArthur and at uh, Creekview High. Coached outside of Houston. Uh, coached here at John Jay. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've, I've been in a few places I've been in California. You know, Monta Vista High School. So I've been I've been all over the place. And when you can't find Goodlow on the field, you can find him in an AP English class. And obviously in the English class, you know, those heroes' journeys and things of that nature. So I've always enjoyed teaching. I like to see the epiphanies uh, pop across the brows and the expressions of people's faces when the young people realize, man, I knew that already. Uh, I just enjoy helping them understand that. Uh, so that's the same whether it's, you know, I'm teaching in the classroom or teaching on the grass or on the track. So it's the same for me. And oh yeah, Goodlow also has a PhD, which makes him Dr. Goodlow. So I have a doctorate in sports management with an emphasis in leadership and really uh, what that exploration was about is learning about the different forms of leadership and how uh, the relationships whether they be transactional or transformational. For Jack TV this is Ethan Reyes. That's all for this week Jack. See you next time with more Jag action. Princesses to Marble, you've probably seen all your favorite childhood characters around school. I spoke with seniors to find out where the tradition came from. While well, senior year signals the end of a chapter, some students are taking it all the way back to their childhood with something as simple as a bag. I thought it would be cute and it was like a senior thing that I could do with all my friends and we could all do it together and felt like I was part of a community. Social media plays a big role in creating new trends and this time is no different. I saw um, seniors do it last year with their senior backpacks and I saw it all over social media, mainly on TikTok and a bunch of different schools doing it and I thought it'd be cool if we did it too. Making sure you pick a design that fits you or your whole friend group is important, yet there are always some fan favorites. Um, definitely a lot of little kid shows like uh, Paw Patrol or Barbie or Spider-Man. But, while they may seem all fun and games, there are some things to keep in mind before making your big purchase. Um, a lot, I would say negatives, it's space. You don't really have a lot of space in the backpack. There's only like three pockets in mine and they're kind of small. Last year I had like four pockets. It's a bit flimsy and so all of this stuff kind of like, I don't know, it's not very supportive like on my back. So, keep an eye out for these light up throwbacks and think about what yours might be in a year or two. For Jack TV, this was Annika Vasquez reporting. And as the year goes on, seniors will get to experience even more traditions that have been part of our campus since 08. This year, Johnson has over 800 freshmen, and they have over 800 questions. We got some seniors to help them out. What is your favorite part about Johnson? Uh, my friends? Okay, how do you not fall down the stairs? I've never fallen down the stairs, but I've actually fallen up the stairs. Do you guys like the, the cafeteria food? Depends on what the meal is. Can you drive me to Dunkin' Donuts? What, what is your favorite TV show? Probably How I Met Your Mother, because it's back on Netflix. Did any of you take AP Geo, and is it as hard as it, everyone says it is? Just do the work, bro. Like, seriously. If you had one dream car, what would it be in the next two years? Oh, you know those cars from, like, the 40s that were, like, candy red? Probably, like, one of those. Is prom going to be fun? Yeah. Plus, you got a date? Even better. It's like, do you get, like, secret special privileges? I mean, having that senior early release, ooh, right there, that hits. Don't forget, we have a three-day weekend. The campus is closed on Monday, September 2nd to honor Labor Day. Finally, on September 11th, Darrow TC will hold their 9-11 tribute at 8 a.m. by the flagpole in the main entrance. Dress code will be red, white, and blue colors. For more updates before our next show, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Jack Student Media or on our YouTube at Jack TV. That's all for this week. See you next time, Jags.